Good evening and welcome to the March 13th uh, Water and Sewer Commission. Before we begin, quick shout out to the 4% of Richmond voters that showed up on town meeting. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, jumping into tonight's meeting, anybody else care to make a public comment before we begin? No. Hearing none, moving forward. Uh, Josh Board, any addi additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Hearing none. Moving on, uh, first item 3A, attorney-client communication regarding possible extension of the water and sewer system, possible executive session. And I'm trying to open my memo here. Do you want to just go ahead and make the motion? If you could. Thank you, Josh. I move to find that premature public knowledge about attorney-client communication regarding possible extension of the water and sewer system would cause a town or person to suffer a substantial disadvantage. Thank you, Jay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, motion made and seconded. I assume there's no discussion. Aye. <laughs> so calling the motion to a vote, Jay's an aye. I'm an aye, Aaron Barb. Aye, Barb. And I'm an aye. Uh, okay. I move that we enter into executive session to discuss attorney-client communication regarding possible extension of the water and sewer system under the provisions of 1 BSA 313A 1F and to invite town manager Josh Arnson, interim water and wastewater superintendent Alan Carpenter and attorney Dave Rue um, into the executive session. Thank you, Jay. Do we have a second? Ms. Bard, I will second that. Thank you, Bard. Motion made by Jay, seconded by Bard. I assume there's no discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, calling the motion to a vote. Please identify yourself and signify your vote. Jay, aye. Morgan, aye. Aaron, aye. Bard, aye. And this is David, aye. We are in executive session. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, going back to our warned agenda, we are at 3B, consideration of request to increase water and wastewater allocation at 22 B Depot Street. This is the... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yep. funeral home building, right? Yep, it is. Uh, Gifford funeral home building. Okay, so we have you know, we have Derek here from the project. If you'd like to oh, okay. Request, Go ahead, Derek. Uh, give us a succinct overview. Hey, everybody. Um, our our uh, client is proposing to add on to the west side of the Gifford building. Um, they want to put a two commercial space which they don't have identified yet but two commercial spaces um on the lower level and then four additional um two bedroom dwellings above one on a second floor one on a third floor and we are looking for the additional water and sewer allocation um for 960 gallons per day uh, based on the state rule calculations um, we, we have the sewer service that's in place is sufficient to handle the flows, but we will be looking to extend a new water line for fire protection and domestic flows. Okay. Oops. You Go ahead, Bart. Um, just you know, for for transparency, um, maybe restate what the current allocation is, and then what the increase is. You probably know Derek on him. I don't know that to be honest with you. Uh, um, sorry, I. I'm... All right, so you know, it's not entirely um, crucial, in my opinion, David, because we have. Uh, we have unused capacity for water and sewer. Um, and it's not this depart this water yeah. sewer commission's issue with this, but there have been conversations about parking over and over and over in this part of town. So that's another sort of set of permitting. So I just note that that's something that may come up. And I don't know if you have anything you want to say about that for this group, regardless of it not being within our purview. Yeah, no, we... um. The project uh, is proposing 12 parking spaces in the in the rear of the building. Um, 
sort of formalizing the backyard is sort of gravel and building um, different different size buildings. So um, when the two buildings are combined, there's they're going to be um, potentially twelve units, so to speak, uh, twelve bedrooms. So we're providing a parking space for each of the bedrooms um, with reliance on the main level from the community parking or from the from the parking along Depot Street for daytime use for the resident for the commercial spaces. To follow up on Bard's question, I know through informal conversations, the uh, the current use there is very low for flow. Um, and this is a request for an additional 960 gallons per day total for water and uh, 960 gallons for wastewater. So it's an additional 960 gallons per day, uh, additional to what they're currently using. That, that's right. So we basically the existing building is still remaining as um, well, it's not a crematorium anymore, but it's it's still, I guess, used for funeral services. Um, and then the upper level still has. Uh, two two dwellings in it that will remain. So so those flows are unchanged. Okay. Any further questions, comments? No. Okay. I guess at this time I would entertain a motion. I move to uh, approve a preliminary allocation for addition of 960 gallons per day for wastewater, 960 gallons per day for water at 22 Depot Street. Thank you, Morgan. Do we have a second? To this part, I'll second that. Thank you, Bard. Motion made, motion seconded. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just make a comment. Sure. Um, the current, um, what's there now, their stormwater is tied, the roof drains are tied into the septic system. Oh. So, um, you might want to take into consideration what if they're putting a bigger roof on, not tying it into. So is it sewer system or septic system? It's yes. our sewer system. Sewer system. Oh well, that's that's one other thing I'm referring to. Avoid. Oh, if you look, if you look at the current building that's there, there's a orange pipe, a uh, green pipe on the outside that's tied directly to the sewer system in the basement, and so that means the roof drains are running into the, the current sewer system. Right. Seems, I, uh, this seems to be outside of our territory here, but it's- Yeah, this like is a request for additional allocation, but that's certainly something we want to follow up on. Uh, I'm actually, I know we've already moved and approved the motion. We I'm haven't gonna, approved it, we just moved it. I, I'm going to um, suggest that we amend the motion to say contingent on any stormwater being decoupled from the wastewater system. Make a comment. So seems like that. But we need to second the oh, amendment. Oh, I second uh, board's okay. motion. So you're seconding the amendment. amendment. Okay. Amendment. Motion made and seconded on the amendment. Now we can discuss. Derek, I was hand up. Go ahead, Derek. Yeah. Um, so we were. I was just actually made aware of this. I was not aware of this. I've spoken to the architect and said, "Hey, we have a problem." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the architect uh, does have a plan to disconnect that. Um, okay. Our current design, <clears throat> we, we're doing a test hole on Thursday of this week to, uh, we want to put subsurface uh, infiltration system behind the building with the overflow to drain along the west side of the building um, to solve this problem. So we are working on a design to disconnect that from the sewer system. All right. Well, I would just point out that if this motion passes, at, passes as amended, you cannot avail yourself of the increased allocation without doing that. Correct. Okay, yes. Yeah, we're, we would be required to do that is what you're saying, correct? The allocation would be contingent on disconnecting the, the roof stormwater overflow from the uh, septic wastewater. Correct. Yep, that, that makes sense. Do we need to vote on the amendment or does the original? It's accepted as a friendly amendment, I would not okay. vote no. Okay, so we're voting on the initial motion as amended. Okay, any further discussion? Okay. J.I. Morgan, I. Aaron, I. 
Bard, aye. And David, aye. So this is a motion to approve the preliminary allocation for an additional 960 gallons per day for wastewater and 960 gallons per day of water at 22 Depot Street contingent on the roof drain being disconnected so there's no stormwater roof drainage going into the septic system. The motion has been made and passed. Oh, David, I unanimously. Uh, anything else? It just kind of water, wastewater really doesn't have anything to do with stormwater. Shouldn't. What's happening is a it lot does. of stormwater is being hooked into the okay. municipal sewer drains. But once it goes onto the surface, I mean, it doesn't. It, it, it's not our permitting. Um, but what the obligation is, take the stormwater out of the wastewater, and then you have to do it acceptably, but we don't review or approve that. That's another set of permitting and engineering. Where this, this commission is concerned is every time it rains, the flow at the treatment plant goes way up, which right. means a lot of wastewater is going into it. And our... it's nearing the point where the plant won't be able to handle it on in, in big storms. My, my only point was we're not part of the water Storm water going anywhere right. except in. We just don't want it going into our system. <laughs> and they sh okay. okay. Moving on. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Okay, so B is done. So next is review request for proposal for electronic water meters. Josh, did you want to leave this? Sure. So this comes after much discussion about electronic water meters, specifically meters that we can get that can accomplish a couple of tasks. Um, first being that we could drive around to collect the data and not have to stop at each individual meter to read the meter. It would be a handheld device that would collect that data and then automatically download and upload into Nemeric for uh, more automated billing. Uh, as we had that discussion, we also talked about other options we'd like to see on that, such as a notification of um, water sewer staff um, and or also the customer if there's no new really high flow detected so that we can have an alert for the, for the sooner time frame. Um, Alan and I sat and looked at a couple of specs and some different meters. I put together an RFP for the commission to review just to make sure that we're not overlooking anything. Um, once that's finalized, hopefully tomorrow, we'll get that out. We'll have a three week sealed bid process to um, to get bids and bring those bids back to the commission for review. So just seeking feedback on the RFP, if any. I've looked it over and um, the bit about if you don't have the feature to um, let people know when there's an usually high meter flow, how much would it cost to add that? I just want to, you know, that's for me, that's one of the key things I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And you do have that in there. I'm just saying, okay. I was glad to see that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great move forward. I, I think it's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for reviewing it. All right, move it up. Okay. Update on the 20 year wastewater treatment facility study. So, this is something I was looking back. I thought we had talked about this a while ago. I think Kendall had brought it up perhaps in the um, water and sewer superintendent update at one point. Yeah, I think it was mentioned, but, but we didn't yeah, really get into it in depth. Uh, as, I, as I look at this, but essentially um, VTDEC is requiring a 20 now, Sorry to interrupt, but what does VTDEC stand for? Environmental conservation. conservation, okay. So uh, they require a 20 year evaluation of the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, the study will assess each process element of the wastewater treatment facility identify anticipated remaining useful life, identify needs and provide alternatives or recommendations for identifying those needs. Um, they recommend, they require, this goes into the state water investment division format preliminary engineering studies for the 20 year evaluation. Uh, it's a planning document given to the town to inform the need for adjusting potential near term, sort of five years and long term by the 10 years. For replacement of, of pieces and parts at the plant. Um, so we worked with uh, Hoyle Tanner, which is a um, engineering firm that was in our RFQ, request for qualifications, and they put together the uh, they put together the um, proposal. It's gone to the state. We're waiting to hear back from them. As soon as we hear back from them, we'll bring that back to the board for consideration of approval. Um, the total cost of this 
could be up around $150,000. There's a 50% subsidy from the CWSRF funding, which is the same funding that we use on the clean water side that we use for DWSRF. You've been familiar with that from recent water line extensions. Um, and we do have wastewater capital reserve, which has a balance of $458,000 as of the end of FY22, and that money could be put towards this project. Bart? I have a question about the sort of scope. Would this include in scope or support um, an expansion of scope to the um, equipment inventory? So if I remember correctly, some years ago, there was a piece of equipment that came from like Sweden mm -hmm. and the replacement it was like four months. Mm -hmm. So if that piece of equipment failed and you didn't have replacement on site, you're down for four months for that pieces of equipment, that piece of equipment's function. Um, and so I think it it would be appropriate to include in scope not only what is the age, the sort of asset inventory uh, within the plant, separate from what we've also talked about, about lines and valves and stuff, the equipment inventory, and then what's going to be on site for, you know, inventory, like, you know, if you don't have a flat tire, or if you don't have a replacement tire, and you have a flat tire, you have to stop. And wait for help. Mm -hmm. Operational. Right. To operationally, what should we have in the inventory yep. as opposed to what do we have in the inventory? And good. All right. So I hand go on. Uh, no, uh, go ahead. Well, I think you're a good person to comment on that. Um, we have nothing in the inventory. And I'm, I'm, I, this 20 year study needs to be done. The plant is in a terrible shape right now. It is glued, literally glued together. Um, and we have no parts, no pieces that we can use. Most of the stuff is 20 to 30 years old, outdated. Um, the major part to the pump plant, sure. The major part of the plant, the two influent pumps, um, one is non-existent now, mm -hmm. um, and the other is any day will be dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is this needs to get done. It needed to be done two years ago, three years ago. The the influent pumps, the mechanic that worked on those five years ago told Kendall up front. They needed to be replaced then. And we're five years down the road and one is now totally gone and we're we're left. So the answer to, to the way the plant is designed to run, it's, it's redundant things. So you have two of everything. You run one one week. Uh, the way it's been run is one one week and switch to the other so that you can fix the one when it's broke. Right. So it, they work in redundancy. The problem being now is we're out of redundancy. Mm -hmm. We're down to just barely scraping by. All right. Um, David, at least you and I will remember having had this conversation with Kendall in the past and having had some reassurance that we're fine. Yeah. Um, so I think this just confirms my um, request that the question of the inventory, but also for replacement assets. So to your point, you got two pumps, one's intended to replace the other. But back to my tire analogy, if yeah. they're both bald and you have one spare tire, if one goes and the other goes, you're back to three tires. You need a better right. inventory replacement system, arguably on Co at least core components. Correct. Um the the two influent pumps that are in the plant or were in the plant, um, they're 1972 age. They're original to the plant. You guys got your money out of them, really. Right. Yeah. So my question is, I mean, we've got this 20 year thing coming, but it sounds like that's going to take a while to get done. We have something we need to address like yesterday. So, yes. Can I, so I do have a list that I've been working with Alan on, and the influence pump is on there as far as something that we're working on addressing. And actually, Jenny from Hoyles Hanner 
is helping us figure out the specs for that pump because we had a quote from a, um, a pump supplier, which we're not going to take as the only quote. We wanted to get the specs from an engineering firm to let us know exactly what do we need to put into the RFP to go out to bid to get this in. Unfortunately, that takes time to do that. We're trying to move as quickly as we can with them, knowing that if this goes down, it's going to be a costly, it would be a costly patch to rent something to, to get it. You're looking at so uh, that so yes, I am completely aware that we're looking at a lot of money per week. I think you said twenty thousand dollars per month potentially to do that in the short term. Yeah. So we're working uh, with Hoyle Tanner to get the specs for that to get out to bid as soon as possible, because what we don't want to do is buy something that's then not going to work with the upgrade or right. something that isn't going to match our flows. Um, there are other issues and other things at the pump that are other things at the treatment plant that Alan and I have been working on as far as making sure that we have replacement parts. We're working on getting certain things replaced. If we talked about the, um, the wastewater pump on the other side of the bridge, working on getting that repaired. Um, so I agree that there are lots of things to be addressed. We're trying to address what we can in the short term, and this 20-year study is going to be most helpful. How Target. much are these pumps? So they're in the $20,000 range. Yeah. Oh, the replacement. And, the what, pumps. and what would it cost? Oh, no, to... Sorry, they're about the same number, right? Yeah, I think you said it's about $20,000. If, if the one that we currently have fails and we're left with nothing, it's it's estimated that it's about twenty thousand dollars a month to rent to rent something that would do the job. Okay, but, but to... also twenty thousand to purchase one to yeah. replace based it. based on one quote that we have at this time that may or may not exactly fit the specs. It's a good markup. <laughs> but also going market along market. with also going along with this, be aware that the system and the plant over there has had a lot of modifications to it throughout the years mm. so and this was from um phil laramie of laramie um water <clears throat> he recommends that don't put a twenty thousand dollar pump in without putting some way to screen right. the stuff beforehand because you put a twenty thousand dollar pump in and don't put a grit screen mm -hmm. in the influent before it and you're you're going to have a rock in it, and he he has he's the one that's taken these pumps apart. And five years ago, when he took the one apart, it had a rock in it about that size. We should have a grit screen. So we need grit screen in included in the engineering and stuff of this. So Phil has offered to walk through, and he does this with other plants. He offers to walk through with the engineer. It, it, it's not like he's trying to drum up business for himself because he doesn't want to do whole plant restorations. He, he, but he will walk through with, a, with the engineers and say, look, you can put the pumps in, but you need to have a grit screen or somewhere to protect right. them. You know, he has that real world um, experience that you would have if you had a mm -hmm. superintendent covering you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you know, one other comment that I flash on our septage rates and septage receipts, like our both our flow and mm -hmm. rates. This is sort of thing in a rate structure that you'd include your infrastructure costs and they're wearing out. So the fact that I bought my car doesn't mean that I let somebody drive it to Florida for free because it wears it out, right? There's like wear and tear on that. So I think when we calculate septage rates and revenues, we should calculate not just staff time and chemicals, but this is an example of the cost allocation of infrastructure to those charges. Because um, arguably, the more septage you take, the more is going through. Appreciate it's not coming probably with rocks, but I don't know. <laughs> Septage comes through with way more rocks than comes through the influent. Septage is received through a, its own grit screen. That grit screen is in desperate need of repair. <laughs> it is failing. Um, we take probably, I would say, three 55 gallon buckets of actual rocks out of the grit screen 
for septage every week. And, and they're put into the dumpster and, and trucked away. But that's what the grit screen is designed for. It's taken out grit and rags and stuff like that before it gets down throughout the rest of the process. But the every part in the plant has issues right now. And it's in desperate need of, of some up care. Um, when I was hired a year ago and, and I stepped in and started doing maintenance stuff. And I'm not going to say that it, it's a responsibility of somebody else that they should have done it, but there are no maintenance logs whatsoever that I can find. The maintenance logs ended in the 1990s. So when I go to look at the maintenance for stuff that's been done, and it's in somebody's head, right? I it it needs you. I mean, you need to have it on paper, right? All right. Or or in a computer system. I'm sorry. I mean, one last thing that, and I'll try to stop talking. That we were supposed to have an asset inventory. That was water and sewer was supposed to be at the cutting edge of our asset inventory, which I understood was going to include not just lines and valves, but infrastructure within the water and wastewater building. When I asked to access that, I was told there was no computer capable of accessing it at the town. Mm -hmm. And that was what the superintendent told me. Just what we were told. Well, well so there's layers to this then. Yeah. Well, this is not the first time that we've been, that Kendall was saying, everything is wonderful, hunky-dory. I've got an award on the wall for the best water. That award was in 19. I, I, I know that's the thing is, um, what are the problems? Did I mention we got an award for the best water? Oh, and um, yeah, everything's great. We're maintaining things on schedule. We got an award for the best water. Um, we need to we need to do due diligence and make sure that we have maintenance procedures logs. So that's this 20 year thing. Um, we need to make sure that we have the processes. If we need software, we need to make sure we have the software to track this stuff. Um, that's a big asset that was allowed to decay. And the sooner we can get that you know reversed, the better. Yeah, a lot of this could be done. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Morgan. Uh, spreadsheets. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I create spreadsheets all the time. And, and, and you know, one of the things I, I did when I started was um, Kendall put me in charge. Uh, of going around and doing all the fire hydrants, making sure because they hadn't been checked. I mean, simple things to the water system hadn't been done for years. Right, and that's so part. So, what part of what we need is not just those records, but we need process documentation so that when you, you win the lottery and you move off to Bora Bora, we're not left wondering what was that stuff Steve was doing Correct. every week. Mm -hmm. Okay, Correct. so that's so. <clears throat> so another example when I when I I'm an apprentice and I'm going to school, but I have real world. You have a life. Yeah, about how to handle things and make things go. But when I stepped into the water plant and I I look at an operator's manual <laughs> that's dated 2000, um, I think it's 2010. And that manual is supposed to tell, I'm supposed to be able to pick that up and be able to operate that water plant looking at that manual. It's from 2010, and it's still telling if we have a power outage, we're supposed to contact Summon or Fire to get a tractor <laughs> to hook up to the generator to run the plant. And I know he's been dead for quite a few years. <laughs> well, we'll get a Ouija board. So, <laughs> so, so I'm just saying that there's a few things that have been neglected along the way. And, yeah. and I, I really, I, I have debated to come and approach you guys with this problem. Um, so, you're, you're in charge, I'm just- Oh, no, no, you finish your sentence, but I have a question when you're done. I, um, so what do you, what is the way that we could help you the best? Like, do you want us to- Well, for um, one, we need, to get this, need this study, study what done. else can we do? But in, I think in the study also needs 
we need to have somebody um, included, light Phil Laramie. Right. So because I'm not a, I'm not up to speed on everything that that needs to be done. Like if if the engineers told us we could put two pumps in, and that's great. Well, that's what we've got now. But you know, Phil's like, well, <laughs> you're going to protect those. You're going to put some insurance in front of those, and and that's what needs to be done. He has that experience. And, and there are other people out there. I'm not saying he's the only one. But when I approach Rural Water um, and ask them who they would recommend coming in and advising mm -hmm. the engineers, um, because an engineer's design is on paper mm -hmm. and Phil is real life. Mm -hmm. And and he's he will you know question them and recommend things. And he has done it in several other plant upgrades going around. Um, but when I asked rural water, they are like, get Phil Laramie. Mm -hmm. right. Kara? You're still on mute, Kara. You, can you hear no. me now? Can yes, you hear me no. now? Yes. Great. <laughs> thank, first of all, I want to thank Stephen Steve, for coming forward and bringing this to light. Um, it takes a lot to do that. And I really appreciate you, you doing it because I hope that grocery shopping list that you're preparing with Josh has some items on it that can easily be purchased and not have to wait for this, this big study to be done. Um, I am disappointed that we are down to one pump and don't have a replacement pump. How long has the other pump been out? We, um, shortly after the first of the year, um, I came in one morning and the pump was finished. It, it, okay. It, so so it, and we have taken it out. Bill Laramie came and removed it, uh, gave us an estimate of, 20, 000, over $20,000 to rebuild it. And then you still have a pump that was put in in 1972. Yeah, but what my point my point here is that was probably eight weeks ago. So if yeah. we're if we're eight weeks out on one pump, then it should be um, a priority and not a delayed anymore and waiting to create a list and, and work on a whole list at the same time. I think you all have to identify the priorities that are emergency level, like ranking them as, as high priority right now should be dealt with immediately and lower priority on the list. Um, because if that singular pump fails, the system's down. Right. Um, and it's really putting stress on, on you work on you, you guys who are trying to run the system to to be in an emergency mode and you guys shouldn't have to always work that way, I guess, is my point. Right. And, I mean, and go ahead. Uh, I've, I've relayed this to Josh several times. I leave here every night, not knowing what I'm going to encounter when I come back the next morning. And, uh, and, and to Bard's comment about um, the, the septage and stuff like that. Um, I am really, but I have been pushing hard for, for a long period of time for you guys to really look at what you are charging and, and, and such. And I really think that this is yet another time that you are finding out that there are problems and there have been problems for years. And I really hope that you guys prioritize and make sure the system can work now but you also have to to realize that that's probably why you've been banking so much money that we brought to your attention is because the maintenance has not been being done and your previous superintendent was not getting it done so yeah. thank you for working on Stephen coming forward and and bringing this to your attention Thank you for pushing Stephen for it to, to get done. And I'm going to keep pushing you guys as the as a board of our commissioners 
to, to make sure it is getting done because I'm trying to help the, the people who have asked me to come forward who can't, their bills are too high. They're the highest bills in the state of Vermont. And that's why I'm going to keep pushing. Heidi. Um, again, Stephen, I do appreciate you coming forward, knowing that this is definitely maintenance and something I do every yeah. day and having a top priority getting fill. This is my personal feeling as a businesswoman. You get fill in this week. If we can, you figure out the top priorities. We've got unre unreserved funds. These are things if that plant goes down, yeah. we're all in trouble. Mm -hmm. Those are a top priority. We can work on the other things as far as with the state, we're moving forward. It's it. I feel, yes, this has been a prolonged thing. It's a new group in there. We are moving forward. This is the protocol that needs to happen. This is the top priority. We get filled. We move forward. It sounds like you guys work with him. It sounds like he's I mean, the expertise. He's... And if we have to wait on the other stuff, then that's what we have to wait on. But knowing that this is top priority for our residents, I think is crucial. And that should be done this week. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal opinion. I agree. No. Or either. Um, how long would it take to get the new pump here? Is that the thing that will take four months or first we have to figure out what pump we want? Yeah. yeah. And, and, those with and part of that goes with working with the engineers so that we're not getting something that's not gonna fit into the new upgrade. Mm -hmm. So that it this all has to work together, but my issue with all this was it should have been done two years ago. Mm -hmm. We've lost our redundancy. Yeah. We're now in crisis mode. Um, I, I, I will offer to give any of you a tour of the plant and show you the issues that are out there. Yeah. I'll connect with you to get over this week. Anytime. Morgan? So it seems like we need a... A list of, of, I mean, probably, and this is, I guess, goes in with the engineering study you haven't done, but, but even before that, there does seem to be, <laughs> these are things we need now, these are the cost, and then maybe hear about that the next meeting, if that's our two, if, or within a month. Yeah, I mean, right now, a number of priorities, and we've been in communication with the engineer, we took some time to get yep. feedback from Phil. Phil is great, sometimes his availability is challenging. I got an email back today from the engineer about uh, she wanted to talk more about what the system can actually handle, like how much flow can actually go through the system. So got the email back from her, going to connect with her ASAP to understand that. That's key to her recommending how much or what type of spec we need on those pumps. Connect with Phil to make sure we have those extra pieces there to make sure that we get you get it in, it's correct. Um, that's definitely number one priority. The other one that we're working on right now is, is the... Um, the wastewater pump across the street. Or across the, the pump bridge. station. Pump station. So, Sorry. Yeah. That one also uh, needs some repair. I understand Phil might be coming tomorrow to look at that. I believe so. Um, so that one, another one that they came and tried to repair. It, it failed shortly after it was repaired. Steve brought it to my attention last week. We're moving forward on that to make sure that it gets looked at to be, to be fixed. And also the grid screener. We talked about so I can I can give you a list of my priorities that I've got that I've been working on. I don't have prices in every one of them, but I can certainly say this is the list that I understand right now that we've got that we're trying to actively work. Right. The bunker pump when it failed, I couldn't believe the pump that failed had Babbitt poured bearings. That's a pre-war pump. This is yeah. a Korean War style so, pump. So it's also something that I think starts with Bard's point of we need to understand exactly what we have, why it's there, and should we just change it? Yeah. So everybody that lives on the far side of the bridge there and are in the septage there's their their sewer is pumped across the bridge and that pump station it's built with redundancy it is it is in desperate need of upgrade it was built for the korean war richmond got a deal on it put it in and it's been in since the 70s here mm -hmm. But now the parts for it are not available. So it's complete retrofit. It still had mercury switches in it. You can't buy them anymore. We had to upgrade. Phil had to suss out new float switches for it. 
that would fit in and work inside the parameters that we have. It, it's, it's just glued together. All right, Jay? I know that we have 19 minutes left to go. We're not quite done. Five minutes should be quick. I would very much appreciate if we could get, you know, routine regular reports and on where we're on this because um, I don't like to go into the rich market and say, oh yeah, our treatment plant may blow up any day now, but you know, it's all good. All right. You know, uh, just a comment to the degree that there are contractors with Bill or somebody else, this is not quite rescue, but it's sort of pre-rescue. Like it would be rescue if everything broken and was broken, we right. had to emergently fix it. So this is not a rescue, but it's preventing a rescue. I think if we have to throw some money at this after delayed um, maintenance for some unknown number of years, just to get a sense of what it we need to replace. It's like when you buy a used car, you take somebody who can look at it and go, not the salesman. Don't buy this car or be prepared for this and this and this. Heidi? Um, with, with that, and I agree, I mean, we've got unused funds to be doing this that is, should have been preventive maintenance, but again, we're moving forward. The question I have is if this is through the state, if you sometimes tag the state and say, hey, we're in a situation where there's a little bit of an urgency, it's an amazing how that you get put to the top of the pile. Mm -hmm. And that might be a just a suggestion if you haven't yeah. done it already. So that's for the review of the agreement with the engineer. Yeah, yes. I believe actually we just I just saw an email. I think okay. they just said so okay. I think should, that, that part should be going faster. Um and then it's a connection with the engineer tomorrow to make sure what do we need to do to get the company prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, Garrett, I, go ahead. I, I I feel if you guys are looking for a list of, of stuff that we need to do, I think that. I should be allowed to get with Phil when he's here to look at the pump station and have him do a complete walkthrough of the plant and, and generate that list. Yeah. Phil has the knowledge and yeah. knows what he's looking at and knows what's the problem. I know what's the problem right now. The influent pumps, the filter pump, we're down to one. Um, the grit screen's not working. Dewatering is just hanging on. But... I, Phil could walk through and make us that list if we're we're in agreement that we take a little bit of time of Phil and have him do that. And then we can go from there on, if he says this is priority one, we go to priority one and figure out how to accomplish it. Is it feasible to have that list by in two weeks? I think I think if Phil has time and is, is supposed to be tomorrow, here. To, like, I think huh? it, so here, so we're going to meet next week. We got to finalize it by the end of this week. So I've got the list that I know that I've been working on that you've told me about and that Alan has told me about. Uh, I can start with that list. If you have more to add to that that you know that's not on that list, let's add that. And if Phil has time tomorrow, you add even more, then let's let's get that. If, well, if it takes, if, and so we can at least have a list of what we know right now. And if we can, as soon as we can get Phil, let's get him to add to that list. Yeah, I, I just think Phil is the one to make a priority of the list for us to start. I don't have enough experience. I'm trying to gain it and I'm gaining a lot of it. You are. Um, but yeah. um, I really think that if you want to know this is the first thing you got to do, I know it's going to be the influent pumps. But I know Phil has told me and Alan, don't put in $20,000 influent pump without some kind of protection in front of it. Don't do it. He said, I know your sewer system. He said, I've taken rocks out of your pumps already. You put a $20,000 pump in, no guard for it, and you're going to end up with a $20,000 pump with a rock in it two months in, and they're not going to warranty it. Kara? Yeah. I'm coming. Um, quick, I have a question for a, basically the, the department, the water and sewer department, um, first of all, and then second of all, the commission. Is anybody still in contact with Kendall? Are there communications still with Kendall right now? Not I. Not Not me. Me. Nobody almost, on the, go ahead. It's almost daily communications with Kendall from the department. What? We had, we had a superintendent that was using a pH tester from a pool who wasn't doing maintenance and we're on a, uh, a daily communications with a superintendent who doesn't work for us anymore? 
Does anybody find that odd? I, Thank you for answering that honestly. I didn't say all of us were. <laughs> I, I no no I no no I'm not I'm not judging the staff. The staff has leadership. I'm now questioning the leadership. If first of all, were you aware of that, Josh, commissioners? Well, I knew that Alan had been calling Kendall. I had talked to him about it when Steve brought that to my attention a couple months ago, and I advised him to contact other industry professionals because there's other folks at the state you can talk with. There's people that you can work with from other facilities that will certainly help you out. And he has a very capable staff that's being trained right now from Rural Water that can also help and he can reach out to Rural Water. So I have advised him to not be constantly calling Kendall and reach out for other sources and engineers. There's a lot of people you can work with to help get advice, because I understand you're not gonna know everything when you first jump into a position and you're gonna need some mentorship and some help. So I've tried to guide him in ways to get that information that he can get. I, I wanna be clear, I did not know that was the case at all. I want you all to know that. I did not know, I did not know Stephen told Josh two months ago. <laughs> We got a lot to cover here. <laughs> right. so I, I, and I'm, I'll apologize. But no, 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 I, no, I, no, I, think, I think this needed to be brought forward because I care about Richmond a lot. Yeah. And, and I love my job here. Communication but, is a good thing. Thank you. But this, this issue is, it, when I come to work every morning and I have no idea whether I'm going to be able to get sewer through the plant and treated, it 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 worries me. It's a ticking time bomb, but yeah. And it sounds like the plant was in enough disrepair and enough maybe obcob together by Kendall, but that's probably why he's being used as a resource, which makes it even more mm -hmm. pertinent in my mind that we get the Laramie guy in here to go through this with us so that we can get things repaired and functioning correctly so that we can 100% sever that tie. You need to 100% sever that tie, period. You are going to fire him or he quit. Oh, I don't disagree with you, Kara. I was just saying that's what we need to do to move forward. Morgan, I'm, I'm good. Okay, Heidi? Again, I just want to say we're moving forward. And I think it's great that the employees of what you're dealing with, we're all working on this together. It sounds to me like the commission is moving forward of what needs to happen. And I think by the end of the week, by next week, we'll know even more of yeah. where we're, we're there. I will have to say we do have unreserved funds. So there, it's not that we have to go out there. We have plenty of money in our, in our coffers to do the things that need to be done immediately. I'm just going to spend 20 seconds and say this commission was told by employees that don't work there anymore that everything was covered under the asset management grant and things wouldn't just break at three o'clock in the morning and leave us shorthanded. And I, and I know other commission members routinely visited both the water and the sewer treatment plants and did little pop in, hey, how's it going? And this was all a surprise to me as well as I imagine others on the mm -hmm. commission. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, before the expert comes, I suggest you get a list of documents that you do have or don't have. I can't hear her. If you have a yeah, forward. Lisa, if you're going to talk, we need the MMCTV people. Oh, yeah, well, I'm right. uh, also, Lisa, if you could introduce yourself. <laughs> also, if you could introduce yourself for the record. Lisa Miller. Um, if you have a PNID for the plant, if you have an operating manual, which I think you do, uh, a spare parts list or <laughs> part, spare part, you don't have any of that? No. Uh, I, have, I have yet to be presented with an operator manual for the wastewater plant. Okay. There are still operations in the wastewater plant that mm -hmm. Brad and I are cannot operate because mm -hmm. we don't know how to operate. Yeah, that's and that, and we have asked okay. to be shown how to do it, mm -hmm. and and we haven't been able to be taught. I had the discussion with Josh about bringing in someone from to teach. Mm -hmm. It's basically the dewatering, um, the press. Next week, right? uh, Alan has run it for 10 years. He's great at it. Um, but 
you, you need to have more than one person know how to do it. Right. Because you're going to win the lottery move to Bora Bora. <laughs> well, somebody might. Uh, so um, there, there are, yeah. And as far as the spare parts list, I, I can't tell you the number of times that stuff is broken. And I go to the shelf and there's a box that says new parts. Right uh, next to the Sears catalog. Huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. I open it up and there's nothing in it. Or there's a box with a, a junk, junk, total junk. Mm -hmm. I, I opened up three boxes today and it says good with a question mark on it. And you open it up and it's a part that obviously has been in place. Well, is it good? Why was it kept? Why why wasn't it, you know, chopped? Mm -hmm. So there, there are your yeah. the short answer is there yeah. are no real spare parts. Um slowly I have been accumulating parts mm -hmm. and we mark them with a date when we put them on the shelf and we put an initial, either Brad or I initial the box. So if there's a question, when that box is pulled, mm -hmm. oh, well, you put it up there. Why did you put it up there if there's not a good part in there? Heidi? Um, um, one last thing, again, with moving forward, and I've had to do this in the past, and, it, and it's hard when you have an employee, especially it's been there a long time, and to, to keep the company going as a whole, and if I call it a bad apple, a bad apple, you have to sometimes go, okay, staff, we're done. We need this in writing. There is no more con communications with this person in regards to our company. Perhaps that might be something that the town mm. at this time might want to do. Just thank you, Heidi. A thought. So in the interest of time, with the commission's consent, I'd like to move E and F, E, review of monthly water data, and F, update on Chittenden Solid Waste District Biosolids Agreement to next week. That's fine. Okay. Which brings us to approval of warrants, minutes, and purchase orders. So do we have a set plan in place what we're doing with this for next week? Yes. Okay. Are you good with that, Steve, the plan what? that we put into place for next week? If I can get in contact with Phil and get him to create a list for you guys, that's that's the first step. So just to point out that there is the short term, medium term and long term. So, Lisa, I think you came in after we had talked about the asset inventory and documentation question. Um, so those are things that are missing. Water sewer was actually at the cutting edge of our inventory asset management database. But that hasn't worked mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So uh, that's probably longer term. You know, if this were a tank in battle, you got to fix the first things first and then fix the other stuff and then have spare parts inventory. So I think there's both short term, medium term, and long term elements of this. Or, I'm sorry, quick question. Is there a, uh, design documents available? I mean, yes. From the beginning? Okay, so you yes. something from the beginning. There, there, there are design documents mm -hmm. and there are. Um, individual pieces of um, like the influent pumps and stuff. There are manuals there are that? manuals and stuff for that. Yeah. Um, so sort of manual, so. And like I said, it, we need to, I'm what, sorry, we're about to run out of time. We need to discuss this next week. But feel free to sure. I and I'll I throw this out to anybody, and I, I tell anybody, come down to the plant anytime. I'll give you a tour. Okay. Thank I'll you connect with you to set that up this week. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to come too. Me too. Okay. So uh, one change to the minute at the bottom of page eight. Three lines from the bottom. It says we're usually at the bottom level of the sub page rate. It should probably be septage. So moving on to moval <laughs> moval. <laughs> moving the minutes of February 21st. Jay's got one correction. On the minutes when I was speaking, they were saying six, and I we are saying to say sewer. Okay. I'll, look back. I'll tell you. I'm okay. Outside of those two corrections, any more edits to the minutes of February 21st? No, move to accept the minutes of February 21st. Second. As amended. As amended. Moved Second. by Jay, seconded by Aaron. Any further discussion? Hearing none, calling the motion to a vote. Please identify yourself and signify your vote. Jay, aye. Morgan, aye. Aaron, aye. Bart, aye. And David, aye. 
Uh, any issues with the warrants? No, move to accept the warrants as presented. Thank you, Jay. Bard, I'll second that. Thank you, Bard. Uh, please identify yourself and signify your vote. Jay, aye. Morgan, aye. Aaron, aye. Bard, aye. And David, aye. And warrants are approved. Order, right? So first we have purchase order 4393 in an amount not to exceed $30,000. And this is for administrative services provided by town staff. Uh, we have to accept the purchase order for thirty thousand dollars for our administrative services provided by the town for now. Thank you, Jay. I'll second. Thank you, Aaron. Any discussion? Hearing none, calling the motion to a vote. Please identify yourself and signify your vote. Jay, aye. Morgan, aye. Aaron, aye. Bard, aye. And David, aye. Purchase order four three nine three has been approved. Next, we have purchase order four four five one seven in the amount of twelve thousand twenty one dollars and twelve cents. And this is revolving loan for East Main Street planning. Yes. Morgan moves to accept PO 45 or private 4517 for 12,021 and 20 cents. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, second. Thank you, Jay. Motion has been made and seconded to approve purchase order 4517 in an amount not to exceed $12,021 and 12 cents. Any discussion? Hearing none, calling the motion to a vote. Please identify yourself and signify your vote. Morgan, I. Aaron, I. Bard, I. And David, I. Discussed items for next agenda. So E and F, review of the monthly water data and update on the Chittenden Solid Waste District Biosolids Agreement have moved to next meeting. We'll have an update on uh, funding for overdue maintenance repairs at the plant. That's probably the standing item. <laughs> yeah. Bit. Absent any other business to come for before this commission, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn the meeting. Thank I'm you, Morgan. It. Thank you, Jay. Any discussion? Hearing none. Calling for the vote on the motion to adjourn. Jay, aye. Morgan, aye. Aaron, aye. Bard, aye. And David, aye. We are adjourned at 6.58 p.m. Thank you, everyone.